There is something I gotta bring up though. <laughs> Earlier, I witnessed like the widest part of any show I've ever seen. Was I involved? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Jeremiah. Yes, Stevie? Are you performing stand-up anywhere soon? As a matter of fact, I'm in La Jolla, California, this weekend near San Diego doing stand-up. Then I'll be in St. Louis, then Syracuse, New York, and then I'll be in New York City. Tickets at JeremiahWatkins.com and tour dates and all that stuff. Awesome. Back to the episode. <laughs> Yo, what up? Shanks is in the building. And who do I got to my left? My one and only homie, my one and only brother, Coriano Loco. Hey, what's going on, fool? Coriano Loco in the house, fool. You know, I'm just good to be out. It's good to be out of the penitentiary. You know, you know what I'm saying, I say. Yeah, yeah. dog. You so, look good on the outs, dog. Thank you. I feel good. I say, I'm, I'm, I'm a little hungry you. though, fool. What you, you know? hungry for, dog? Maybe a little quesadilla, fool. For real? Yeah, I haven't had one in a while, fool. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we could probably arrange that. We in Southern California right now. Oh man, it feels they got, good to breathe the fresh air, they, fool. They got good burritos. They got good tacos. They got all that stuff here, dog. Yeah, you want to go to King Burrito with me, fool? I mean, if we, can't, I got you, fool. I'll get you a taco, boil taco, pastor, anything for you, Esse. Okay, anything, I mean, fool. Oh, what is this? My birthday or something? Okay, I think so. You deserve it, go, fool. Shorty. It's Ooh. your birthday. We gon' party oh, like yeah, it's your it's birthday. It. Oh, yeah, God, fool. Man, welcome to the show. Uh, we taking over Scissor Bros right now. It's, it's your boy Shanks and Coriano Loco. Yeah, Coriano Loco. And, I'm um, crazy, fool. You know, last time you saw us uh, outside, man, they, I mean, they hire us to do all their ad reads and stuff like that. But, like, we wanted an opportunity to prove ourselves on the show. So we escaped Pelican Bay. We came here. And, uh, you know, leave those likes and comments if you like. We like Shanks, we like Coriano Loco, you know, because we got to prove to them and all the haters out there that we deserve to be in the main part of the podcast and not just doing ad reads and stuff. Simone, I, say, I couldn't have worded it better, fool, because uh, we've been through a lot together in the penitentiary, fool, and, you know. Show sure enough. And, uh, you know, we showed those fools love on the East Coast, you know what I'm saying, I say, like. In PA, dog, that was the last time we came out, we opened a show, and we did a rap for that oh, live show. Oh, yeah, man, that we, 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 we blazed up the stage, fool, you know, and then I felt real proud in that moment, fool, because... I was just thinking about me Novia, fool, like, because, uh, you know, she still hasn't, uh, sorry, fool. Are you getting choked out, dog? Yeah. Yo, I'm about to choke you out if you're getting choked up, well, dog. Just, just hear me out, fool. She said she was going to pay me a conjugal visit, fool. She never came. So, you know. Wait. Oh, uh, yeah, fool. It's been hard, fool. She never came, so you never yeah. came? That's the saddest I'm going to let that slide, Vato. I'll let it slide, Vato, but I'm seriously very hurtful, you know, because, you know, I was kept asking Larry. I go, hey, did she visit? Is she, did she sign in? Who the hell, Larry? Our, Our prison. Oh, that's right. Come on, fool. Get with the names, program, dog. fool. I be forgetting names mad, dog. I mean, at least you have familia to leave you, you know, money on the books and everything to get you soups and deodorant, fool. I don't get none I mean, of it, fool. every once in a while, but I don't got it like that. You got fresh soap. You look cleaner than me, fool. You know, the whole thing, fool. I mean, you been looking greasy lately with that hair of yours, but I mean, Wait, you, you, you looking fresh now, dog. You better watch your words there, I say. What, dog? I just got a haircut, I'm fool. just speaking the truth. You always wearing a do-rag, fool. At least I, I, I try to style my stuff, Oh, you coming fool? after Shank's appearance now? Okay, I don't want to fight. I want to enjoy my freedom, fool, okay? I want to enjoy my freedom. But, you know, can I give a, a shout out to my girl Juanita uh, Gomez? So, I still love you. Uh, I forgive you. Um, I actually wrote a song about her, too, fool. Uh, I don't know if there's any musical uh, instrumentations in here, fool, but uh, I like to get a a this, some of this off my chest, you know what I mean? Because uh, it's like a love letter, fool, you know, and it would mean a lot to me. They, Chase, got, a, they, got, a, they got a fly ass keyboard right here. 
Oh, snap, Vato. You want me to... Uh, you know how to I play the try. keyboard, fool? I mean, I've tickled some ivories in my time. <sighs> yeah, why don't you try to uh, improvisation something on the thing, fool? Uh, you want to oh. take a crack at it, fool, or what? Yeah, let me see what we got here. Because I got some lyrics for uh, Juanita, fool. I want to get this off my chest. Okay, let's try something right here. Oh, that's hitting, Esse. Yeah, you like that? I'm, I, I, I'm not good at singing, but I'm going to sing from my heart, fool. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Simone, Simone. Mi novias, mi amor Mi novias, mi amor I'm knocking on your door I'm knocking on your door Mi verga is on the floor Mi novia, por vida She looks just like Selena Her ponocha is mi comida She's my one and only Juanita, Juanita Oh, oh, she buys soups for me at the commissary. Her culo is nice and clean and does not look scary. Mm, oh, yeah, that's it. My PO's name is Larry. Me no, yes, me amor. I pray in the morning to the Lord. Que onda, que onda. Que onda, que oh. onda. Mi vida is in the busora. But like I the love the food. Oh. Mi novia, Juanita. His novia, Juanita. Mi amor, mi novia. Es mi amor por vida. I want to eat her pinocha. Mi verga is mucho hard. Yeah, my gum looks like lard. Mm. Simon, por vida. Mi novia, Juanita. She's more better looking than Salina. She's better looking than Selena. Better looking than Selena. She's better looking than Selena. Better looking than Selena. She's better looking, better looking than, than Selena. Than Selena. Por vida. Better than Selena. Thank you, Esther. Oh. Yo, did we just create another dope track that was fly as hell? Yeah, I say, you know, I like doing, you know, musical uh, variations with you, fool. You know, it just... It sparks up the creativity, fool, you know? Dang. So, you know. Yo, yeah. you know what's dope? You see that album right there? Oh, you see that album? Who are these guys, fool? Yo, we know who they is. Come on, man. We stealing their show right now. That's hey, the, these guys kind of look like us. That's, that's the it. best of Scissor Bros Volume 1, baby. And guess what? Shanks and Coriano Loco made it on that. We made it on that well, they album. They put us in here, fool? They put it in there, dog. Look how many songs are on here, fool. Yeah, dog. There's a lot to choose from. And guess what? We on there. It's just fun songs on that set. A lot of comedy songs, some from the heart, and some from Shanks and Corey on the local, these guys, baby. These two look suspicious, though, fool. Like, yeah, some a little off about that white one, look, but it's little, all good. This wet, though, looks kind of suspicious. He kind of looks like you, but more... Uh, Softer than you. Yo, we gonna put that link in the description for the best of Scissor Bros Volume One on vinyl. It's shipping all There's over the US. There's 34 songs on here, fool. Yeah, yeah. You can't beat the deal, Esse. It's fly as hell, dog. This is just fun music, fool. If you into records, you into vinyl, you a hipster ass person who loves this and stuff, then get it. <laughs> you know what? I would support this too if I had money, fool. Oh, can no, I have no, this no. copy? You can have that and. We got what's a, going we, on, do, do you not hear the chop? Do you not hear the ghetto bird outside? Do you not hear the sirens, man? They on to us, dog. We got to get like, the hell out of here, dog. Yo, follow us on social media. Thanks to Corey. I love y'all. Yeah, that's good. Does something feel off to you? It smells funny in here. You know what it smells like? What? I don't think it smells funny. It smells kind of good. It smells like Manscaped two-in-one body shampoo and conditioner. But a little musky, right? Is a little it just musky. Me? 
it, right? Little, it's little clean bit but of, dirty at the same time. Yeah, it's like yeah. It's trying to clean something that was dirty. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, and it, why is my, my seat's kind of warm? Yeah. Is yours kind of warm? Yeah, it's like like there's like a little there, bit of back steam. sweat on the back yeah, of mine bit, or something like bit. that. Ryan, how long you been here, dude? dude? I've been here for like 15 minutes. Where were you guys? You're, what do you mean? Where were we? I thought we were starting 15 minutes ago, and then and then Shanks and Coriano Loco came in here. What? And started doing stuff. I thought they were gonna steal something. W wait, wait, say that again. Did you not tell we them all, to come in? We here? all heard what he just said. I know, but dude, how how they're they're, they're prisoners? How the how how they end I up here? I don't know, man. You didn't tell them to come. No, that's not my idea. We might have to edit that out of the podcast. What are you talking about? We might have to edit what Ryan just allowed on the podcast. We I don't know if we can put. Is Shanks that incriminating and Corey on, on us? I don't know. Yeah, we don't want to be aiding known prisoners? criminals and prisoners. Those guys are dangerous villains, man. Anyway, welcome yeah, to Scissor Bros. Welcome. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, and gals. Weird. Um, yeah, you know man. what? Can we reset everything with some scissors in here? Yeah, we clear should. the it's air. It's so musky. It smells like musky. Um, Ready? Let's do something different. How about the OGs? No, let's do something different. Hands to your How shoulders about, like here's this. Here's the thing. You do your own kind of scissors okay, at I'm home, doing, whatever I'm you doing, want. I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing the I'm OGs. Doing the eagle. Great. Okay, ready? Okay. Join us at home. Clear the negativity in your space. If somebody might have stolen something from you recently, yeah. let it go. If somebody uh, you know, wronged you, maybe let it go with some scissors, yeah. baby. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty-five. All right, I feel better. Do you? Yeah, that kind of cleansed the air. It kind of cleared the air. Mm -hmm. You, there's something about you though that is different though. What do you mean? I mean, there's a new beanie. I haven't worn this beanie. Your so, the side of your hair is. Yeah. D did I thought you were growing it out? I couldn't. I can't take it anymore. Let me see. Okay. But they left the. Yeah, Are kinda, you going to mold it out? You know what inspired me? Uh, shout out to Eric Tweak Sauce because he's got beautiful hair in the back. I, I want to kind of get the mullet going. Are you going to get a, a mullet? Tail, like, either a rat tail or a mullet. Uh, so shout, shout out to Theo Vaughn too. That's the OG of the, you know. That's going to look He has beautiful epic. hair too. You Are know? you going to do that? Are you going to let it keep I going? To, yeah, I mean, I um, I didn't realize that I had a, a super cuts near me, n near that target area. Well, that changes everything. Yeah. So now, it? now, uh, and this lady was really good. I brought a picture of a K-pop guy. Uh, just a, I, I don't know what what group he's in, but I go, can you make it look like this? And look, do you like look at look at the side? Looks good, dude. Do you like it? Yeah, it's I do clean. like it. You always said to go to a professional. Cause I I for years I was buzzing my own. And this was great clips. Huh? Great clips. Yeah. Four point oh lawnmower. See lawnmower four point oh. See a professional. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it at home, folks. Add great clips. Yeah. No, no. Supercuts. Oh, supercuts. Not great clips. Yeah, we got to... Supercuts. Is that... Supercut. Is one worse than the other? Well, I want to promote the right one that I went to. <laughs> I'm not saying great clips is bad or... Okay, but, sorry. We had great I clips in super Kansas. Cuts. Supercuts. We had great clips and supercuts yeah. in Kansas. So, can I ask you... This is because I... You're, you're more versed in going to the barber than I am. I'm not... I mean... No, no, no. no but you are. What's the... How much is a normal? Try to guess how much I paid for my cut and how much I tipped. This is fun for me. Uh, I think you were feeling generous because you <laughs> haven't had a cut in a while. So I think that the haircut was twenty dollars and you tipped ten dollars. That's pretty close. What was it? Uh, the haircut was twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. but you got the tip right. How'd you know I tipped ten dollars? Had a feeling. Wow. I know you, dude. That's pretty gracious, right? Yeah. Yeah, it made her day because she says, come back anytime. You know, it made her happy, you know? Right. Yeah. I was being a little annoying in there, though, because there was other people getting their cuts, and I was being a little loud because I had, like, my, my phone out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, can you make it? I want to look like this guy. And then people were just like, you know, because usually in a barbershop, there's etiquette. I didn't know about, like, 
You were being loud. Yeah. You weren't aware that you were being loud? Uh, I just was so paranoid that she was going to cut the back. I go, can you can you not touch the back? I just, you know, I want to look like this. <laughs> can you just please not touch the back? And then, you know. And then she started kind of doing her own thing. And she goes, I don't have to look at the picture anymore. I know. And so I go. Oh, so you were being annoying then. A little bit. But why is this? Um, is there a different kind of uh, treatment? Because well, the other guy that was there before me, he had the whole like red carpet treatment like he, they he had a shampoo and they brought him different to this. tiers so is there a full treatment like yeah you thing? you bought the low end or the I, middle grade haircut sorry three, i didn't mean to say two, low end. one frugal brother strike, strike again. again yeah you saw the menu and you said i'll take the one farthest left on the menu yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's all i needed though there you go yeah no it judgment here good. it um, looks good it can looks i tell good. you wait one last talking point is uh i it, it, the, the sides were so shaggy and unbearable. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just, it was so uncomfortable. So that's all. That's all. I'm just gonna let it grow now. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think, mullet or rat tail? Comment below. Mullet or rat tail? Yeah, this is serious, guys. Mullet, mullet or, rat or rat tail? tail? What? This could change everything. Well, this I'm could change you... the course of Scissor Bros. Does Steve get a, a mullet, mullet or, or a rat, rat tail? tail? What? Off top, like, what do you think? I vote for a mullet, but. Ryan? Yeah, definitely mullet. What's wrong with the rat? What's wrong? Hold up, hold up, hold up. The rat tail means you would continue to keep cutting the back, but just the ends would be uh, long. Isn't a rat, what, a rat tail is one string, right? Like one little piece that you just grow. Yeah, essentially. I guess, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to throw this out there. If I grow a mullet out, if I want to change it, I could just cut the sides and then leave the rat tail, right? I could do that. You could do that. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll shoot for a mullet then. I so think you're going to look Eric awesome Tweaksauce, with a mullet. The, your, your hair is beautiful. You're an inspiration, brother. Uh, I'll see you on uh, at, on Warzone, okay? We love you. You're doing a good job too, Eric. You said uh, you had a photo that you took in there? Who, who was it? Yeah, who was the person that was the reference? He's a, some kind of K-pop guy. He, a Korean. He also, was, did you just Google search I I Googled. I Googled... Korean uh, uh, K-pop haircut. So you did a blind okay. Google search. Yes. And then you're like, I want this one. Yes. Okay. I think I got rid of it, guys. I've, that's something I've noticed about you. You like to clear your phone. Yeah, it's an OCD thing of mine. You feel like it's like like uh, messy? Yeah. I mean, you know what's so funny? You said that. I'm, I'm the same way with my desktop at home. Like really? when I edit stuff. Yeah. Like After I, you upload it, you delete it? Oh, not only that, I have a certain uh, chronological thing I do where uh, after I interview the, the newest guest, I have to go to the desktop right away when they leave and, and create a folder of the past guests, the, you know, and then I do a weird thing where I put the, all those folders to the right and I like leave them for a certain amount of time and then I do like three at a time I put in the trash can. Yeah, it's a weird configuration thing I do. But same thing with my phone. I can't, I feel like... If it builds up too much, it's like I'll lose uh, control or something. Is that normal? Hey, man. <laughs> you do you. I can't tell you what's normal. Everybody has their own systems. I back up everything. Huh? I'm the opposite. I back up everything. I don't delete anything. You, yeah, you're the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Something that I did that I forgot to talk about last time was when I was in Toronto, I went to a Blue Jays game. I don't, what's Blue Jays? What is that? It's their baseball team. Oh, so sh sorry. So shout out to Blue Jays. So uh, what made you go to a ra random baseball game? Well, I had time on a Saturday, and I wanted to do something cool with Chris there because we were just, you know, we were just doing a lot of shows and filming mm -hmm. those stand-up on the spots back-to-back. -back. So I told him, I go, I didn't want our Canada trip to just be work. We wanted to do something fun too, exactly, you know? Exactly, yeah. So we went to uh, the Blue Jays game, and I got some, got some footage. Yeah. Toronto Stadium right now. Roger Center. Yeah, Woo. about to go see the Blue Jays versus the Red Sox. First time Ooh. at this stadium, baby. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Roger Center, the home of the Toronto Blue Jays. We got the best seats in the house. 
Frugal Brothers strike again. Frugal Brothers strike again. <laughs> How much for a baseball ticket? Um, we kind of got roasted online because I chose the cheapest seats. Frugal brother strike <laughs> again. It was like forty dollars for two. Those are cheap. I mean, you don't gotta rub it in. I know, but there people are like, you sat in the five hundred section. So how far in the stadium? Whatever is, you think, it's higher. Are, so are you like you're a thinking. dot, like in the outskirts? You're like a dot. So how do you have binoculars? But aren't they like little ants? <laughs> like you were so far up there, isn't it? Watching like just little ants. Yeah, it's exciting. Like on a, like a, like a game board. Yeah, it's like a rat like race. Like a board game. I, I yeah, I like it. Now, like, hold up, you're not off the hook yet. I, I I'm curious because have I, you been to baseball games? I went before? to one Dodgers game back in the day. We gotta go to a baseball game. They're so fun. I like the. Things outside of the game, I don't. The, the game itself is boring to me. No, it's 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 it, more it'll about put me to sleep. It's more about. <laughs> it's like you're just waiting around. You're just like, oh. It's more about getting the, the nachos. Ball. It's about getting the chocolate. That's malts. what I was gonna add to it's it. It's more about getting the snacks. Peanuts and, over here. Yeah. Peanuts. The, b -b 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 peanuts it, over here. <laughs> also, uh, it really shows your age that you that you're doing a voice from the fifties. <laughs> peanuts uh, over uh, here. Peanuts. Peanuts. Uh, peanuts. Uh, 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 Come peanuts get, over come, here. Come get your peanuts, peanuts. over here. <laughs> hey, peanuts for a nickel over here. Peanuts. Peanuts over here. Peanuts. Um, look, at, get, look at a woman's pantyhose uh, for 10 cents right over here. 1940 peanuts over here. 1940s. Come over here. Um, <clears throat> how much for a hot dog? Um, you know what was kind of awesome about Canada is everything was so reasonably priced because of the uh the cash exchange because the american dollar is worth a little bit more over there so what's, not, their, what's their uh what's their money d d um, denomination like what, what what's their the canadian canadian dollar or? uh they've got loonies toonies different stuff like that oh, right, 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 like right, for right, their individual right, dollars right, right, right. Or something right, like that right. um but yeah so the nachos over there that mm. would usually be expensive over here dude in american it was like five dollars for nachos Dude, that's a great American pastime, isn't that? Dude, right? Even like in middle school or high school. Like, I you know loved I mean? it. On your break, you're like, I'll oh, get nachos. Oh, uh, you mean just the, the Just American, nachos, you know. With oh, the, the American pastime of nachos? You're not talking about baseball? Well, they, they're one and the same, right? I mean, that's a part of the American fabric is, you know, nachos, hot dogs, popcorn. Yeah. Uh, uh, get your cracker jacks, kids. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. That's what uh, the last The one time that you went to the Dodgers game, do you remember the snacks you got? I got a hot dog. It was a bit overpriced, so I got. Was a it hot a Dodger dog? Because those are big. Yeah, I got a bigger one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't. I don't understand the game, though. I know there's innings. I I don't. You don't understand baseball. I kind of do, but I just I I completely like tune out. Like I know the game's going on in front of me. But I, I was just look. I like. It's more of the spectacle of being in an arena. I think it'd be fun for us to go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we can make a vlog out of it or, yeah. Dude, that'd be fun. Yeah. Be I mean, fun. I'm not saying, I'm not downplaying baseball. It's the great American pastime, but yeah. it's just, out of all the sports, I just, I never kind of gravitated towards Real it. question. I'm not trying to be funny or anything. Is there a, any kind of Korean pastime sport that, <coughs> that I might not be aware of? No, the only thing I could think of is, uh, more like, like, uh, like, uh, like board game or card game. I, I what are some card games? Th th there's a board game that um, it's called Omok. Omok. Okay. And it's like it's kind of like chess and checkers where it's uh, uh, like a square grid, right? Lines. And you're supposed to, uh, you, let's say you have, you're black and I'm white and I'm black or I'm black and you're white. We have like, like these little pellets and we put them on the, the middle of the lines. And the, the point is to get five in a row in a row and so you could like you know what i mean you could like block the next person and it's just oh. it's like a game where it's just like a bunch of pieces scattered throughout the uh the board it's it's a fun game though you played it growing up oh uh, we we or i haven't all, played or, it or, i haven't played it in years but we grew up i mean a lot of korean households have this game omok and uh it's yeah i think you would like it it's it's really it's like 
in between strategy and, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there's a lot of strategy. Okay, I probably oh, would like picture it. Picture this, like picture like Connect Four, but on a grander scale. Oh, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's like Connect Four, but it's Connect Five. You beat, you beat me in Connect Four for that challenge. I mean, that was a rare day. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. That was. I just was on that day. I don't know. What are you waiting for? Yeah. Connect Four. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah, and then there's another Korean. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's a card game where the cards are like, uh, you know, they're they're blank on one side, and then these cards have like maybe like a crane bird on it or a moon, like a black moon, but they signify something. I remember growing up at these Korean uh, barbecues or gatherings where they would they would literally throw like snap the the cards on the. It's kind of like dominoes. Yeah. It's like. Boom. Oh. Yeah, and I, I always thought that was such a weird... It was mostly the men that played that. They were, they'd be drinking beer and gathered. And was Pogs like, past your time? Huh? Pogs? I don't know what that is. Um, Ryan, did you have Pogs? Yeah, I had a bunch of them. Heck yeah. See, I'm Pogs. a different generation than you guys. So, so I, there was something called Slammers on Pogs, mm -hmm. where basically it was a stack of these like cardboard-type discs with different photos on them and stuff like that mm -hmm. some pop culture related some cartoons and you collected them just like trading cards and stuff like that mm -hmm. and the goal was when a when you played pogs it was you had a slammer you'd slam the stacks and if it flipped over you got to keep the other person's pile okay okay so like like you might lose a lot of pogs if you actually played it like that mm-hmm and it got uh, outlawed at some schools because it was like gambling. Oh, really? Yeah. Was Remember it? that, Ryan? Yeah, they outlawed it at my school. Yep. And then where could you get these things? I almost, I almost got hit by a car running into Walmart trying to get the newest Pogs. Oh, so you get them at Walmart? You can get them anywhere, yeah. How much? Uh, I think it was like 20 bucks for like 100 or something like that or like 200 Really? Yeah, the expensive part was the slammers. Yeah. <coughs> What's that? The slammers that yeah. you use to hit the pogs, those were expensive because they had metal ones too. What do they look like again? Like uh, they're disc. They are also called milk caps. Uh, so like are they like casino chips or something? Or kind of, but the, but they're thin cardboard versions. Oh, yeah. So is there just those pieces? There's no board or dude. Anything? I had I had I don't know if I still have them, dude. I have Michael Jordan pogs like from the Bulls, and I'm like, those have got to be worth something, right? I'm sure on eBay they'd be worth a lot. Or I mean, dude, I had like in his prime MJ like holographic pogs. Pogs. Is there a board that comes with it? No, you play You're it just anywhere. on a table. That's the whole thing. You could play it in the grass. You could play it like it all so depends. So it's mobile. Like, it's versatile. You oh, can take you, it anywhere. You put it in your pockets. Really? Yeah. Kids got really into it. They got into we, it. I had a for one Christmas. Uh, I asked for a make your own pog machine where you can put your own images like on your own pogs. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's fun. I, think I had one of those. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was that was a fun toy. I'm sure the the creator uh, of that is a, a bit like a millionaire or a billionaire. It was one of those '90s toy crazes for sure. I mean, it's a big company, right? I mean, did uh, other people try to duplicate it or replicate? Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you ever go to a place called Discovery Zone? That was also a uh, different generation, brother. Um, but you went to Korean barbecue, so let's talk about that. Um, so the uh, do you miss going to like those big family events? Well, that was mostly growing up. I mean, the uh, like, but, but like Co functions Korean, like Korean that. tradition, or at least in America, is a bit odd because. Most of the like bonding and family events happen when we we were kids, mm -hmm. but when the kids grow up, then it's like the opposite effect. It's like, all right, they're grown up. They're you know what I'm saying? Really? It's like, do your own thing. It's now. like we're birds not... leaving the nest. Oh, because I think they dumb. burn themselves out. It's like when we were kids. I remember we went to we all went to Yosemite National Park. We went to Disneyland. This this. It's like, and it's not just one family. It's like the whole like all your aunts and uncles and oh, wow. a lot of like planning is involved and so i but once you like when we get go into it when we got into adulthood it we don't i, I like i only talked to one cousin so shout out to eddie and jenny those are the like the only peeps i talk to now and i have a like 27 cousins jenny that i met yeah I love her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jenny and Eddie. Yeah. I want to see them again. So yeah, those are the ones. Those are like. Can we make the, another trip? Oh, and Catherine too. Catherine and her kids. Yeah. We should make another trip. 
<coughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You like it down there? Yeah. I'm yeah. going down to La Jolla next weekend. Yeah. Um they're um they're actually uh very uh remember they made us corn dogs? I guess I'm technically there this weekend. So yeah, 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 yeah. In La Jolla this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, so they made us corn dogs. It was yeah, great. they made us corn dogs. So it's like you ask. So yeah, for the most part, yeah, but mostly in your youth. But then when you get older, it's just like you kind of like break up the groups and yeah, it gets kind of like um, I guess clicky. I'm, I clicky. guess that makes sense. But um, I've noticed also though, like since uh, I have a son now and my sister has a son now. Mm-hmm. When I go back, like it's gonna be an event because everybody wants to see those two babies interacting. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and that's a part of it too. I didn't even realize. You know that. what I mean? Because so you're like, about to go through it. You're going. Yeah, through it. yeah. I'm about to like embark upon that again. Like we're going back for Thanksgiving weekend, and like my family is so excited for <laughs> my sister's son and my son to really interact because yeah, that's family. They're, they're, they're the cousins. First, they're cousins. They're the first blood cousins in our family tree in like decades. I mean, that's going to be important and vital for their relationships when sure. they grow up. I was, can I bring this up? Like, I was really impressed when you organized um, your son's birthday party. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole cotton candy machine and oh, yeah. the pizza stacked up. I'm like, oh, he, they did a good job, like, organizing this event. <laughs> was that, was that, there a lot of, pla- I mean, how, how yeah, hard was it to plan something like that? It wasn't crazy. Huh? But it wasn't crazy, but okay. yeah. Okay. You're learning as you go. Dude, I'm learning everything as I go. I, I'm aimlessly wandering as a father through this life right now. <laughs> I'm figuring things out as I go. Yeah, you know what? Uh, like I had an epiphany. Like well, one time I was over here. It was at nighttime after we we had recorded, and uh, your wife said something. We didn't get very much sleep last night, right? Here, you know, like, and I didn't realize like, oh, that that's a part of it. Like that's he was part crying, of it. Like yeah, his ear or something. Was, Oh yeah, he had a a ear infection a while ago. Yeah. So your sleep has kind of like cut in half. No, I mean it. Just it just fluctuates. Some some weeks it's it's a little bit more rough than others. But uh, like he's been sleeping twelve hours lately, so he's been doing good. So it's great when he knocks out. Yeah. Yeah. I commend you, man. You're doing a good job, a real good job. So. Thank. Yeah. You like this, Timmy? Dude, where'd you get your cool t-shirt? Oh, you mean this true classic? Yeah. Well, support for today's episode comes from True Classic, the absolute best fitting t-shirts for men. Where'd you get that piece of garbage? Uh, Target, this one sucks. And it shows. Finding the right t-shirt is frustrating. Most t-shirts are way too tight on your gut or look way too big like this one. True Classic gets you a better fit at an affordable price. And guess what? They're giving our listeners the hookup. Go to trueclassic.com with code SCISSORBROS. Men's t-shirts are designed to look good on models. That's just not going to work for us guys. True Classic's tees taper off at the bottom, unlike this piece of crap. Yeah, man. (laughs) They fit tighter around the chest and the shoulders, highlighting your best attributes. Guess what? What? These are tight in all the right areas. Some t-shirts are get too hotter on the armpits and then they, they, get, they get stained up. Or they get flappy like, like this piece of crap. Yeah. The first thing you'll notice is how soft and smooth your True Classic is. From polos and workout shirts with the same flattering fit. All of their gear is top-notch quality at reasonable prices. For you big boys, they have a long body option and sizes up to 3XL. It's about time you learn how to dress yourself properly. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with code SCISSORBROS. Get in there. That's yeah. 25% off and free shipping over $100 with code SCISSORBROS at trueclassic.com. Get the Dells. Get the Dells. Stay, Stay classy, classy with True Classic. Your dad bod will thank you. Oh, yeah. You know what, brother? What, man? This shirt sucks. Yeah, it does. Forget you, man. Forget you. True Classic. Yeah. Thank Good job. you. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple other, um, uh, there's this place in Toronto called, uh, Queen Street that is like, you would like it a lot, dude. It's like an awesome shopping district. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I got a couple clips, uh, from there. They're doing a little marketplace here. Pretty cool. A lot of different shopping and stuff that people are doing. Hey, Chris, are you about to go inside of a teepee? Uh Uh-huh. Let's go. Wow. Here we go. This is pretty neat. 
We're out here in Toronto right now, and uh, yesterday was Indigenous Peoples Day, and now we uh, are checking out this space. Just hit a cool spot called Black Market. Black Market Vintage Store. Check it out if you're in uh, Toronto on Queen Street. Fun. Dude, this is a key machine that they have inside of the sneaker store where you can basically enter for a dollar to play for one of these pairs of shoes. Amazing. Yeah, it was just like a couple cool like like vintage stores and like stuff like that, like on Queen Street that I thought that oh, you would like. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, do we still have like the Scissor Bros PO box? We have. Have you checked it lately? I, dude, I actually have. Um, we uh have a couple packages that I actually brought. If you want to open them yeah. up from the garage, where well, they're here right now. Uh, yeah. Look under your. Ta I put one oh, underneath oh, your table over there. Cool. Okay. Um, I got one for me, and uh, well, they're, they're both for us. But like, I'll ha I'll have you open that one first. Okay. So my, well, let me go first. Yeah, you got it. This one's oh, this one's for from our main man Joel Stokes. Oh heck yeah! Shout out to Joel Stokes, dude. This is insane. What is it? It's like a customized Bad Friend Scissor Bros collab T-shirt, I think. What? Yeah, this is insane, dude. Open it up. Oh, Open oh it my up. God. Open it up. This is cool. But dude, look at this, Gerald. Dude. Postcard, dude. That's Gerald, look. Hey, Gerald, you got some mail, buddy. This what do you think you, about dude. that? I feel pretty fucking good. It's just nice to be accepted, you know? You want to thank Joel? Thank you so much, Joel. You do so much for us in the show. We love you. Thanks, Joel. That's awesome. Thank you. Gerald's stoked, too. Stickers, dude. Really? Yeah, our curious George stickers. <gasps> That's awesome. Dude, look at that. That's great. Here, pull it back to your face because there you go. Yeah. Thank you, Joel. Dude, That's look great. at these. These are amazing, dude. Hold up the shirt. I'm curious about the shirt. Okay. Whoa. It's like tie-dye. Whoa. That's epic, dude. <clears throat> How cool is that? That's really freaking cool. That's from uh, the exclusive artwork that Joel made. We only made like a hundred of dude, those things. Dude, thank you, Joel. We gave those up to challenge competitors at the amazing, live show dude. and stuff like that. And people who came to the live shows. That's great. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. That's Boom. great. Hell yeah. Uh, if you guys are wanting to um, send in stuff to the P.O. Box, uh, address it. Jeremiah Watkins slash SB. P.O. Box 78375, Los Angeles, California, 90016. And this one comes from Cole Magnuson and in Half Moon Bay, California. Let's see what this guy is. This is the frame. It says, in commemoration of one of the greatest burns in podcast history, at who put this can in my hand on Instagram. This is when I was on Tiger Belly and your brother was saying to roast him because he was roasting me. He goes, oh, what do you got? I called him Wonton Theo Vaughn. <laughs> Dude. And, 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 and Cole made awesome art for it. Why is his face so wide? Because he's a wonton. Dude, this is art, baby. I don't know. If, I don't know about that one, man. <laughs> I don't know about that one. If he saw that, I don't know how he'd feel about that. I tagged him in it when it originally you, went you, on you Instagram. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it is such a funny looking picture. It's so funny. We got to put it up in the studio, dude. You want to? Yeah, that's so. it's so good. All right. Dude, I wish my tattoo looked like that one instead of the one that I customized. <laughs> There's always room, brother. Dude. Isn't that Dude, cute? Dude, that'd be such a good tattoo. Isn't that a cute little dumpling of a brother? Yeah, he looks like an oval. Like yeah. a sideways oval. Yeah. Like a sideways egg. Yeah. Yeah. I like his haircut, too. What yeah. does it say? I can't. I, I forgot my glasses today. Wonton Theovon. Wonton Theovon. 
dude, that is so racist as well. It's wonton teal vodka. It's so racist. It's so when your racist. brother had a mullet. I know, but dude, he told it me is to roast so him. Racist. He told Wonton-tio me to roast him. Wonton teal Vaughn. You came up with that on the fly too, huh? God, you're quick with it. Uh, I mean, that's we got to put that up. Okay, that's we'll a put good it up. Piece of art. It's great. Wow, dude, thank you. Yeah, we haven't done a PO box segment in a little bit, so wanted to um wanted to uh, do that on the show. But yeah, dude. Yeah. Anything anything new with you that I should know about? Well, I don't know. I've been trying to show off my new kicks for the last week or so, but you guys kind of didn't notice them. <laughs> what do you mean you've been trying to show off your well, new I just, kicks? I got some new Sacotis. So you yeah. And didn't Look. I say so shout out to our main man Ron Fungus. Um, yeah, Ron Fungus. Ron Fungus. <laughs> shout out to Ron Fungus. Because we both we have the Sakoni thing going the on. Graves, Ron Fungus. <laughs> fungus. Is that's the right way to say it, right? Fungus. Yeah, yeah, that's how you say it. Ron Fungus. Fungus. Yeah, fungus. Say it correctly. Yeah, like you have toe fungus. There's raw. There's Ron Fungus. I didn't say fungus. I said fungus. Yeah, yeah. Our main man Ron Fungus. Okay, there you go. We both love Sacconis. Do you like them? And uh, we love you, Ron Fungus. We love you, Ron Fungus. Yeah. I said it right there. There you go. Don't you like them? I like them. Yeah. You've got multiple pairs of Sacconis, though. Uh, yeah. But I complimented you before the cop- podcast started. I said, hey, I like your... I, are those new? I was wearing them like the previous one. Did you and go... I, and I was trying to like give you guys hints like... You guys, it was you guys were in here, and I was like putting my foot out, and I was trying to like really get like, like try, and then like I gave you several chances. I was like doing this to both you guys. I'm like trying to like shoe model them in front of you, and then you guys compl- are oblivious. But it's okay. It make I feel good about on it. the Uber ride home. Were you like, oh man, they didn't notice my new shoes? No, but it's it's kind of like it's kind of like. A, a, a new tattoo or a haircut you get, no one cares about it but you. It's like someone who gets a new tattoo, you know, it, they, they're they the only ones that, like, take pride in it. Mm-hmm. Like, other people might not notice it. Right. Same thing with your a haircut or a pair of shoes, a new shirt. No one really cares. So that I, I understand that. Hey, we hit a milestone with the podcast. <laughs> Earlier today, uh, you showed Ryan your pubes. Yeah, what do you think, Ryan? That means I like you. When I that's like bonding. You know what I liked about this is, is Ryan just responded, "Okay, you're a human." The yeah, most, I, I, the most AI robotic response yeah. possible for another man. We need to loosen man. you up, buddy. I mean, we haven't like you know we haven't hazed him yet. I haven't hazed him. What year you know, is I this? Mean, well, it's like this is the Scissor Bros. Let's th- think of it as a institution or like like a, a fraternity. Even though I don't b- like believe in. That or whatever, I've never been in one. So you want it to be a fret, even though you don't believe in frets. Yeah, well, we want to do something that they do. Where like a you, positive fret? Yeah, like a positive, kind of a, a dorky fret. Like for the dorks, because we're the underdog dorks, okay? we need You need to loosen up there, buddy. We need to... We have to do something. We have to do something to make you uncomfortable a little bit. So what do you think about my pubes, man? They exist... And that's the kind of personality that we need behind that, the camera. That's fair enough. <laughs> Keep it professional. Fair enough. Keep it a very... Uh, amp, beep, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Uh, yarn pumes exist. Fair enough. Going back to Joel, uh, this could be a possible tattoo. Yeah. What do you think? This Gerald... Uh, you know? This could work somewhere. I'd like a Gerald tattoo on you. That'd be cool. Yeah. Are we, we talked about this. Yeah. So. Can I keep this? Yeah. I can have this one? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you know something we haven't done in a long time that I think that we need to bring back? Some people have forgotten about it. Uh-oh. Some people have been upset we haven't done it. Uh-oh. Some people are going to be upset that it's coming back. But I think it's important to bring different bits and different fun energies to the show. Please welcome back to the show after a long hiatus. The Puppet, Puppet Show! show. If it isn't my favorite patient, Tony Nichols. 
Hi, Dr. Valentisia. It's a really good seeing you again. I noticed that your tooth is still dangling out of your mouth. Yep, shit's gone awry in my life, and I haven't had the money to fix it. But after your visit today, maybe, oh, maybe I'll be able to fix it. I wanted to talk to you about that as well, Dr. Felatisha, because my insurance policy is on hold right now. Well, you know it's also on hold? This friendship right here. So is this a transactional relationship? Uh, perhaps. Gulp, 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 gulp. Mmm, that tooth tastes yummy. Because I have some other issues that I'm dealing with at school right now. I just entered in sixth grade. All right. What seems to be the problem, Tony? Well... Oh, fuck. I lost my You tooth. lost your tooth. Are you okay, Dr. Valentisha? Oh, no. I can barely talk right now because I have enough teeth in my fucking mouth. You're talking with just no teeth in your gums. Oh, I bet a guy would love me to blow him right now because uh, I got you, no teeth. Are you good to continue the therapy session? All right, let me go. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, as long as you're comfortable. Anyway, I'm doing a new thing called PE, and I think it stands for physical education. But anyway, they're making us shower and it's mandatory and I'm embarrassed to go in there. Why, is something wrong with your dick? Bullseye! Tony, what's wrong with your prepubescent penis? Well, this one mean bully named Brad told me something that really hurt my feelings. And what did Brad say? He said, now, what I have down there is a micro penis. Well, the only way I'll actually know is if you show me your dick, kid. Is that appropriate in this type of professional setting, Dr. Felatisha? <laughs> I'm a doctor. Anything goes. I don't think it's appropriate, and I don't think that my mother would approve of that, Dr. Felatisha. You're not paying, so we're just a couple friends hanging out, right? Can we do it off camera? I'm a bit embarrassed. Okay. What about now? Va va voom! As you can see, it looks like a, a, a piece of a, a skittle or something. And when I get in there, I, I have a hard time getting uh, naked in because the, there's all the other boys around me are a lot bigger than I am. Here's what you need to do. The next time you shower, pop a Viagra. Do you know what a Viagra is? No, what is that, Dr. Feltisha? It's something to plump up your little stick down there. Now, take it a couple hours before and then think of some girls or something that's uh, enticing to you before you get in the shower and then if you have a micro penis it's going to look normal compared to the other giant athletes around you so are you saying this pill will enlarge my micro penis and also your prostate wow so how do i get these uh viagras here i'll write your prescription right now but I'm, I'm so young, are you sure that I'm old enough to take this stuff? It might give you a heart attack, but that's not on me. Your dick's gonna be full of blood and that's what you want, kid. Isn't this something you, my mother should be in the room for? All right, we gotta go. Great stopping by, Tony. Well, I hope your teeth grow back, Dr. Felatisha. Can I, can and I, I schedule hope... another appointment with you? I like you. And I hope your dick grows back. So, can I make an announcement to other kids out there or, or boys going through the same thing as me? No, 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 no. This is confidential oh, you're information. Right, Dr. And Felitisha. I highly advise you guys to not do that if you are a teenager watching this. So, God made you the way you are. Don't be ashamed if you have a micro penis like me. Be happy and accept that and work on your personality. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
that were in that. And then I also think that um, it's important. Are you uh, being, hold up, are you being serious? Yeah. I also like to think that um, Dr. Falatisha should not be giving advice to all teenagers, that that was specifically to Tony Nichols. And Tony we do Nichols. not advise uh, kids at home to ever take Viagra. No. I mean, that's for adults. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fair to say as well. I like that you had that dis- added that disclaimer. I'm kind of getting excited for the challenge. Do you have anything else you want to talk about before we get into the challenge? I mean, do we have a, we have uh, we have time? I mean, because I, I I was going to talk about a new make time for you, bro. Okay, okay. So, you know, I like going down the YouTube rabbit hole, and I uh, my 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 girlfriend suggested a thing that she watches called Mister Ballin B A L L E N. Have you heard of this guy? Nope. He does like murder mysteries, like Women abductions. Love murder shows. My mom yeah. watches the first forty-eight all the time. What is it about that? I don't know. Women love it. Yeah. I love it too. Yeah. So there's this one specific story that, dude, it was so unique. Can I kind of talk about it a little bit? So I don't know what university it took place, but it was uh, some school on the East Coast, some a campus, a university, where a kid goes to. Um, he goes and visits his friend in a different dorm, okay? But this dorm is uh, is on the other side of campus. And there, his plan was he was going to visit his friend and go to a, like, a party and then go back to his dorm, right? So he ends up going to his friends. I guess they drink a couple beers. But he ends up leaving his jacket in that other dormitory and goes, it goes to the party without his jacket or something like that. Yeah. And so... He ends up partying off campus, and then at the end of the night, he, he realizes, like, dude, I forgot my jacket at my friend's dorm. So he has to, from the party, walk back on campus to the other side of where he is to his friend's dormitory, dormitory but notices that at a certain time, they lock the, the doors just self-lock if you don't have a key or something if you don't live in that dorm you can't get in yeah so he's there like past midnight it's like two in the morning now and he's like trying to get people's attention that he had some students did kind of like because he was knocking on the door he's outside of the actual building Uh, of the dormitory yeah so what ends up happening is he he knocks and then he does get like some students attention but they're like notice that he's drunk and they're like what's this guy's a little sketchy so they didn't open the door for him okay so what ends up happening is this kid he's 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 hammered by now he ends up just walking and just exploring the outskirts on the outside of this dorm and discovers this maintenance door that's kind of cracked open but it, it's kind of like the placement's weird where he had to like jump down into this little this lower uh, kind of tier yeah and it, there's a random maintenance room door that's just open and it's pitch black check this out so he ends up walking inside this random it's dark now he doesn't have his nothing yeah he, he doesn't have his phone no light source and then he noticed like machinery sounds like, you know, like, and he didn't know what it was. And so he noticed the, the, the primary door, the smaller room leads into a bigger like room with machinery and different sounds in there. Ends up being like the, uh, the worst possible room to be in. It was a electrical current conductor it, 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 this is the way he explained it like when powers go, like when the electricity goes off in certain areas of campus this like boots up right and it, it's like their backup electrical light whatever yeah. electrical current source ends up he's literally it's kind of like a Freddy Krueger room you know like the first Freddy Krueger where Freddy Krueger's from yeah see he ends up pinning himself he notices like there's all this machinery and wiring and uh, like uh tanks and tubes and weird stuff right machinery stuff that he doesn't know what it is he ends up pinning himself against like the one of the whatever the piping things and trying to make trying to go forward and just just to explore to get because he's thinking oh if this could lead back into the dormitory where i need to go yeah he ends up putting his finger in this in the wrong place some um tubing thing where it it 
he it's like the most electricity electrocution shock where he ends up dying and freezing like pinned up against <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not I'm not laughing at him because it's such a crazy story he ends up like be, being like literally just shocked shocked to death shocked to death um like his leaning against this wall in this piping isn't that it's a crazy story right and so the way they discovered his body is um one of the maintenance men noticed um uh like he you know he's he's actually on the opposite side of where this kid entered from and is doing his maintenance kind of like uh you know work and 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 he noticed that there was like this bzz, 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 like like this extra um sound that he was uh he's never, heard he's never heard before but that sound ended up being the kid continuously being shocked like bzz, bzz, you know it's so this mr balling guy like dude there's crazy stories like that where it's like dude like wow i mean what are the chances of something like that happening yeah isn't that a crazy story i'm glad we could fit that into this episode um should we get into the challenge now <laughs> That's wild. I don't know what else to say other than I'll, I'll maybe I'll have to look this up on YouTube now, like uh, this series, because it, it sounds insane. Okay, one, because I, I have to commend this Mr. Balling guy. One thing I like about his channel is he's so animated the way he tells he his tells stories. Story. Yeah, 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 and I love it. So check him out, Mr. Ballin on YouTube. Okay. Okay. So what well, we've been we've been kind of asking you guys lately how you like certain things and also our patrons uh at patreon.com slash scissor bros they like the element of surprise when one of us does not know what is going on with the challenges so we we used to do that back in the day and we're experimenting with that again i have no idea what challenge we are about to do <laughs> steve and ryan got together this week behind my back unknowing yeah. to me and mm -hmm. they picked a challenge and a punishment and we're gonna get into it right now right yeah okay I like the way you presented that. So me and Ryan, we've been talking, and I, I was at a just a, a store, and I saw this item, and I'm like, and it caught my attention, and I'm like, oh, maybe we could do a Scissor Bros challenge with this idea. So the challenge is going to be called the Magic Dino Creature Challenge. So this is this is the thing. These are capsules, and you need uh, water for these dinosaurs to grow. So art. <laughs> so what? What? This is the thing we talked about. It. We need two bowls, but you need warm water. So this is the kicker. We're gonna be. You're gonna have your bowl of water, my bowl of water, and you can't use your hands, but you you kind of have to implement your mouth as well where it needs, so you drop a capsule in warm water, right? We have cold water, but it needs water in general for these dino creatures to grow. So the first person to get their dino creature to grow, um, and you could use your own methods, but you need to use your mouth as well. And with, with the cold water, but you, the warm water, uh, the, you need a warm source for these dino creatures to grow, okay? So the first person to grow their dino creature in the bowl, um, using your mouth by your, your own techniques wins, okay? And so, yeah, so you have to drop a capsule in warm water. We're not, we're using cold water, okay? But we're using your mouth. And so you could do your own techniques for the, uh, to grow these dino creatures. How do you know it's, it's fully soft done? expanding foam? So it's, it's going to be pretty much safe. Uh, okay. Uh, it's soft expanding, uh, expanding foam and just one dino or yeah yeah i'm yeah it's because it'll probably take we've talked about it, it'll probably take a while just for one to to grow uh, i want to use the same color so whatever uh there's uh three green three yellow okay. and three red um the loser the punishment is the loser um is gonna uh, you know in this the spit water you know because you can the loser has to uh put their head in the aquarium and then the loser has the, both bowls of stuff poured onto them, you, like your saliva mixed with water or whatnot. So and thanks. You guys, for, and you guys thought of this punishment like while yeah, you're we, getting over COVID. When did we talk about it, Rye? <clears throat> Yesterday. Uh -huh. I know you're not contagious for COVID, but you still no, got I'm it. negative. I'm negative. 
I know, but you I, still, I took a test to get you still, negative. You still got a cough and stuff, though. I know, but that doesn't mean. I mean, that, that's just the aftermath of of COVID. I, I I'm 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 COVID free. I'm just saying you can have other things. <coughs> I mean, that, and that's the beauty of this uh, this challenge is you never know. So thanks for joining us at Dino Creature Challenge. All right, so explain to me what we're doing. I'm still, I'm still not really. So the main point is who could grow the dino creature the fastest. There... But you have to use your mouth. You can't bite down on the capsule as well. So this is the bowl is where the birth could happen. The birth happens. I mean, because yeah, you obviously don't want it to grow in your mouth. Uh, so we're using because this is cold water, and uh, whoever could birth. The dino creature the fastest, but it's going to obviously birth inside the bowl. Yeah, it says drop capsule in warm water. But this is cold water, so right. this is the so warm water is your mouth. So we have to breathe into it, like blow it, bubbles, you could, whatever? You could do whatever you in whatever. In a few minutes, it will become a dino creature. Yeah, and then it will be the okay, dino, so birth in the bowl. This is either going to be a triceratops, a parasaur, parasaur. Parasaurolophus? Par yeah. I've never heard of this one. Parasaurolophus or Velociraptor. And we, we decided to go with the red pill. The red pill. Okay. So we're just dropping it in and then whatever? Well, uh, I would say drop it in your mouth first and then into the bowl or however you want to do it. Yeah, it can go in your mouth. Go in? Yeah. Okay. So five, four, three, two, one. Ew. Oh, you're heating up the water. How you doing over there? I don't even know what it's doing. Dude. I don't even know what this challenge is. <laughs> Love the challenge idea, guys. <laughs> Is yours even opening? I don't know. I might have to bite these well, capsules, dude. Okay, go ahead. Come on, baby. Oh, mine's, mine's doing something. something 
Mine's about to be born. Huh? Mine's about to be born. This is T-Rex. <laughs> This is the dumbest freaking. What one did I even grow? <laughs> Bro, this is the T Rex. <laughs> this is this is what they consider a T Rex. <laughs> you won! You beat me! Show the camera! Look, do you see the little arms? This is so stupid, dude. <laughs> what is yours? <laughs> still born. It looks like it's still born. Oh, yours is a T Rex too. Yeah. But it's not like. <laughs> it's so Mine's long. You have a different creature. You won. You won. Good job. So. Oh! <laughs> so, so. I'm dumping this over your head in the aquarium? Yeah, both bowls. I lost. Good job. Thanks, man. Yeah, good job. Uh, and look at what's in mine. Steve's has... T Why do you have tobacco? Do you have something in your mouth? Did you forget about the tobacco in your mouth? Well, there's a, a lot of residue. When you dip, when you dip, yeah, sometimes there's stuff left. Did, left were you up. dipping earlier today? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So show your dinosaurs? Yeah, so Mike... Mike is... Uh... Mine's a... This is so silly, dude. <laughs> That's for the thumbnail. You get it, right? Yep, I got it. Man. Okay, okay, so let's, you won. So don't worry about, yeah, no, you get to yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah, you could pour this, yeah. It did, there's your saliva in there, right? Yeah, Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Ready? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Your dino creature is still in yours. I know. Okay. All right. Okay. It's coming. Ready? Yeah. Oh. oh! Oh, it's cold! Oh. Dang, dude, that's your, that's your saliva, bro. Ah! Oh! Oh! oh. Your tobacco. Oh! Oh, my tobacco's in my hair! <laughs> Oh, that's gross. <laughs> oh, I'm like tobacco's in my hair, guys. <clears throat> and you guys killed a pincher bug in here. Dude, look at the pincher bug. Dude, there's a spider, there's a cricket. Oh there's, my gosh, this is gross. There's a silverfish. This is gross. All right. Okay. Well, guys. Good contact. This is a bros, best of volume one on vinyl. Link in the description below. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Susan Bros. And look out for Steve's new music yeah, coming yeah, soon. Yeah, okay, buddy. Good All right, job. we love you all. I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. still there it's your pal Gerald and hope you guys are doing well I hope they they, 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 they update like they keep using fucking old footage of me in this corner when Ryan has made everybody else look really good on set I would like it if he reshot my intro and you know I'm just like over here like living in a in an ST world and when everybody else is in an HD world and you know what I feel like I'm living in an S my T world that's what I feel like sometimes where I'm asking for you know other animals S my D and then you know nobody's listening but anyway I really enjoy this episode it's like a full-blown variety uh, sketch show pretty cool comment below if you enjoyed this format we, we love you guys and Hope you have a good week and we'll see you soon. Love you. Bye. Mi novias, mi amor. I'm knocking on your door. I'm knocking on your door. Mi verga is on the floor. Mi novia, por vida. 
She looks just like Selena. Her ponocha is mi comida. She's my one and only Juanita. Juanita.